Here I'm going to provide some information on the Combined DNA Index System, or CODIS. Now what is CODIS? Well, CODIS is an electronic database for DNA profiles that can identify suspects. The DNA profiles from individuals convicted from certain crimes, such as rape, murder, and child abuse, are entered into CODIS and help officers identify possible suspects when no prior suspect exists. So it's this kind of index, this kind of file, this kind of database that can be used. So when comparing target DNA to the records, CODIS was designed for this purpose. It was designed to compare target DNA record against DNA records contained in this large database, an ever-growing database. Once the match is identified by CODIS software, the laboratories involved in the match exchange information to verify the match and establish coordination between the two agencies. The match of forensic uh, DNA records against DNA records in the database may be used to establish probable cause to obtain an evidentiary um, DNA sample from the suspect. So this is kind of a way that they can kind of get the warrant for trying to get into DNA if they have a reasonable cause. And law enforcement can use this as a documentation for that court order uh, to collect the biological sample. The casework uh, laboratory can then perform a DNA uh, analysis on the known biological sample so that it is an analysis that can be presented as evidence in a courtroom setting. Now, what DNA information is stored in the actual database? Well, the DNA profile, also known as a DNA type, is stored in the database. For forensics, um, STR DNA analysis, um, short chain repeats analysis for DNA profile consists of one or two alleles at the 20 CODIS core loci. So it's kind of that kind of rapid DNA in the booking station, being able to take a swab of someone and get that information into the database. Now the CODIS information in general, uh, only the following information is stored and can be searched at the national level, so there are some protections here. The DNA profile, which is a set of identification characteristics or numerical representation at each of the various loci, is analyzed. The uh, agency identifier or the agency submitting the DNA profile, so be able to trace and know where that came from. Also, the specimen identification number, generally a number assigned to sequentially at the time of sample collection. This number does not correspond with the individual social security number, criminal history identifier, or correctional facilities identifier. So it's kind of an independent number, it doesn't match anything else. And the DNA laboratory personnel associated with the DNA profile analysis. So a lot of this kind of information is collected to not only allow the uh, specimen to be identified, but to give some idea of where the DNA profile is, who's the agency identifying it, and who's the laboratory personnel that worked on it. Now protecting this database, the uh, computer terminals and servers containing the CODIS software are located in a physically secure space. Access to these computers is limited to only those individuals authorized to use CODIS and approved by the FBI, so the physical storage computers are well protected. Communications between participating federal, state, and local laboratories occur over a wide um, area network ac ac accessible only through criminal justice agencies approved by the FBI. This is to try to eliminate any chance of this data escaping or getting out or into um, unknown hands. DNA, the data is confidential, so of these data that is collected, in pursuit of federal law, the DNA Identification Act of 1994, DNA data is confidential, it was established very early on. Access is restricted to criminal justice agencies for law enforcement identification purposes only. Defendants are also permitted to access, access to the samples and analyses performed in connection with their cases, so it's a very small sample set that can access these records. If all personally identified information is removed, DNA profile information may be accessed by criminal justice agencies for population statistics databases for identification research and protocol development purposes for quality control purposes. But again, that is only after any personally identifi identifiable information has been removed, so it just becomes a collection of numbers. No way can that be traced to any one particular individual. The unauthorized disclosure of DNA data in the National DNA Database is subject to criminal penalty not to exceed $250,000. So just to know that the um, data that is in here is confidential and is has multiple levels of protection, so that's only used for the purpose it was intended for.